Hey guys, Patton here. Today I'm going to show you how to use overlays in RetroArch with your Sega Genesis Mini. One of the reasons that people don't like using RetroArch is because it doesn't look like you're using the Sega Genesis, you're just using it as a RetroArch machine. Even though the Hackchi team hasn't gotten full integration with M2 Engage, I can at least make it so it looks like you're using your games from the Sega Genesis Mini. Hackchi makes this process extremely easy. You'll have these borders up in no time. The first step is to hack your system with HackGCE. I will have a tutorial video in my description showing you how to get that done. Once you have your system all set up, you want to make sure that your games are running through RetroArch or you at least have it installed along with a Genesis Core. Even if your command line is set to M2 Engage, as long as you have RetroArch and a Genesis Core installed, you can start the game directly into RetroArch by hitting Start instead of the A button. Once you've gotten everything installed, next we have to move the borders to our system. I found this pack of borders online. I'll have a link to these borders in my description. This actually works with any borders you find online, but today we're only going to focus on the ones related to the Sega Genesis. Opening it up, there's a RetroArch folder, then a Config and Overlays folder. We're only working with the Overlays folder. Within that folder, we have a Sega Gen Mini folder, and within there, are our overlay files. If we take a look at this blackmini.png file, it gives you an all black border. Moving on to Sega Mini.png, this one is like that bluish green grid crosshatch style. And the last one is Sonic Mini with the speakers and Sonic in the corner. With Hackchi open and connected to your system, go to your tools tab and FTP client. You want to navigate to ETC, Libretro, and then go into the overlay folder. I'm gonna take the files for both of these backgrounds and drag them directly into this folder. Close out the folder, and we're all set. Just remember, if you made any changes to your command line, you have to resync your games. Now let's head over to the Sega Genesis Mini, and I'll show you guys how to enable these overlays. To get started, let's open up Sonic 3 and Knuckles. See, we have the indication in the top left corner. It's best to do this part where you're on a screen where the borders are clear and identifiable. From the quick menu, we're going to go back, go down to settings, and we're going to go down to on-screen display. We want the first option right here, on-screen overlay. We want to turn on display overlay. We're going to go down to overlay preset. We're going to go in this option, and you can see our two overlays that we added are down here, Sega Mini and Sonic Mini. Let's pick Sega Mini, and you won't notice a difference right away. You have to go up here to the hide overlay and menu option, turn that off. And now you can see the background image. From here you can change the overlay opacity or the overlay scale. And you can mess with the overlay scale until you get the height correct but it still doesn't fit exactly right. So instead of changing the size of the overlay, we can change the aspect ratio of the game screen. We're going to go back again, and this time we're going to go up to video. We're going to scroll down and you'll see you have some aspect ratio options. There's a few pre-selected ones that you can choose from. Make sure your aspect ratio is set to custom. Now these are just my personal options, but I found that it fits in the overlay pretty well with these settings. The X position I set to 158, Y position is set to 24. The custom ratio width is 963, and the ratio height is 671. Let's back out of the menu and see how this looks with the game. Looks like it filled in the space really well. And again, those are just my options. You may have something that looks a little bit better for you. Once you have your ratio set, you may want to go back into your RetroArch menu. Go back to your on-screen display options. And then hide the overlay in the menu again so you can see your options a little bit better. When you go to resume your game, the overlay will come back on. Now when you're done playing, make sure you go back into your RetroArch menu and quit RetroArch. This will save those settings to this core. So the next time you open up a game, all those settings will be applied automatically. I'm going to go back into my menu and change to the other overlay.
So even though these games aren't running through M2 Engage, you can at least make them look like they are. And for me that's nice because I like to keep these games looking as close to stock as possible. And there's a bunch of overlays you can try out. Just search for RetroArch overlays online, add them just like I showed you in this video. And that's it for me. I hope this video was useful for you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Eric Cologne, Jordi Alex, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Dor, Yaroslav Orudzov, Den Cardoso, Andre G, Randy Day, and Batman.